<laughs> good morning church good afternoon or nighttime whatever time it is for you it's josh turner again out here in washington uh i got the big dumb dumb wandering around garm thank you for that thank you obviously showing off for us so today i thought i'd talk to you about trimming a dog's nails might not sound like the guy has anything to do with God, but give me a minute. I'll try to connect them dots. So dog's nails are like human nails. They grow. And if left untreated or unkept, you can cause some damage and problems, right? So a dog's nails help him to feel the ground, help him to grip things, help him to tear things up. But these nails can get too long sometimes. And what'll happen is they start getting jagged edges on them. And when the dog uses his paw, like he normally would, to, you know, shake your hand, or if, he, if he's a dog who jumps, jumps up on you, these things. Well, when his nails touch you, they're gonna leave a mark. Cause now they're sharp. They're not, they're not ground down. They're not rounded out. They're long, sharp. So they're gonna hurt. Now, there's a few ways to deal with this, right? You can clip your own nail, your own dog's nails on a regular basis, keep them short, keep them trimmed up, not sharp, these things. It's usually a little difficult. Dogs don't like you cutting their nails, especially their owners. So the other thing you can do is make sure that they walk every day on concrete because the concrete will help grind their nails down help them not be so sharp, take off those sharp edges. But now if you don't walk all the time on concrete, this isn't gonna work. If you are not willing to trim your own dog's nails or he's not willing to let you, it's not gonna work. So what'll end up happening is people will let their dog's nails go for too long. The nail will start to curl, it'll grow into the pad, they'll start to walk weird, all kinds of stuff, right? That wouldn't have happened if they would have trimmed their nails, but because their nails are not trimmed, now we must compensate another way by either their gait is off, they have to limp a little bit, or they're in pain, or they put you in pain when they interact with you. So how does this connect with God? Well, if you think about the nail, the dog's nails, almost like you would think about our understanding of scripture, okay? So when your nails begin to grow, meaning you become a Christian and you start to study scripture, your nails begin to grow. But one thing that happens is if you don't keep up on the maintenance of your nails, they start to grow the wrong direction. They start to become sharper than they should be. They start to hurt or injure the people who you interact with. So when you study the scripture and you've come to a determination of, well, the rapture is happening, or this is the way this verse is supposed to be, or this is what it actually means to be a Christian, just realize the more statements you make that says this specific thing is what makes you a Christian, the sharper your nails get. Because for new Christians, a few rules they get. Believe in Jesus. Turn from your sin. Help other people. Love everyone. Right? These are some simple rules. But as you keep going and you decide you found more scripture that will help your nails grow, you have to think to yourself, your nails being longer do not make you a better dog. So you knowing more scripture and able to quote that to people or use that as what has been called a proof text doesn't make you a better Christian, especially if after you've given these proof texts or your answer, if your response to this leaves the other party with scratches and wounds, then guess what? Your nails need to be trimmed. You need to go for a walk with scripture. 
That means not just finding the verse that you were looking for. So when you say to yourself, I need something that proves you have to be baptized, well, you'll find it. If I look for something that says you didn't have to be baptized, I'll find it too. So which one of us then has the sharp nails? Well, the person with the sharp nails is the one who puts their nail onto another human and says you will be marked by it now. What that means is the other human said, this is my opinion of how I'm saved and I believe I am saved. If your answer included something like, well, if you haven't done this, this, and this that I believe in, then you are not saved. You've just injured them. You've just injured them with your nails. So what does all this mean? Does it mean not state your opinion if it might hurt somebody? No, not necessarily. Sometimes people's feelings get hurt and it's okay. They have more feelings. They'll figure that out. But you should ask yourself, how do people look when you leave them? How do people feel when you get done talking to them about the Bible or just about your day? Did you leave them worse off with scrapes and scratches? And if so, maybe it's not more scripture that you need. Just like it's not longer nails that you need. Maybe you need to refine your scripture. Whittle down the hard edges that you've decided are rules from God. That are actually just rules that you've decided on. You and your buddies have decided we all think God meant this. That's what he means. Well, he don't quite care what you think he means. Okay? And he doesn't live by the rules you decided he has to. So if you're going to be sharp with somebody and have some sharp nails, make sure it's, it's only for a few things that Jesus was sharp about. If he wasn't sharp about it, and after you get done talking to your brothers and sisters in Christ about it, if they're still cut and yet he wasn't sharp about that, it's you. You're the sharp one. You're the one that when you interact with people, they leave with wounds instead of with healing. There is no argument that you will need to win with a believer or a non-believer that will leave them hurt that is somehow going to be counted as rules for Jesus. Okay. This doesn't mean you can't have harsh words. It doesn't mean you can't have disagreements. But those disagreements shouldn't end with pain or yelling or someone getting kicked out of the church or you leaving the church unless these things are really something that requires that much response. If instead you just realize that every conversation you have about the Bible ends up being an argument, no matter who you're having the conversation with, every time you feel like you need to state your opinion, somehow... People in the room get upset. Maybe it's not just them. Maybe you're a little sharper than you need to be. Remember, it's written nah, somewhere. I don't know where. You'll have to look it up. But it is written, may your words be few and sprinkled with mercy and grace. It's not a direct quote, I don't think. You don't have to win arguments. You don't have to defend Jesus. He's perfectly capable of defending himself. And trust me, if someone out there has the wrong information, but they are searching for Jesus and calling on him, he will not let them lay in the ditch. He will find them. You don't need to be sharp with them or guilt them into submission. You just need to love them. You loving them and then you loving Jesus Trust me, eventually they'll choose to submit because they'll see it. Choosing to submit is always better than someone being forced to submit. Look at your nails, church. See if they cut people or see if they just need to be walked around a little bit, rounded out. I love you all. Go in peace.